Okay, well, we are very excited to have our speaker with us today, and especially because he was gracious enough, actually, gracious enough to pinch hit at the last minute. So thank you, JD. Um, so JD Delfonso is here with us today. He, um, for those of you who don't know, um, he leads the Peoria Area CBB, which works to promote our seven counties in central Illinois as a desired travel destination, a great place to live and work and raise a family. So very glad to have you in that role as well as with us today. So he is from central Illinois originally, uh, grew up in Washington, currently lives in Peoria with his wife, Laura, and two sons, uh, Joe and Vinny, who are just little guys, three and one respectively. Uh, he's a graduate of Ball State University. Pause for applause. Um, BS in public and campaign communications. Uh, he originally came back and started working with Bradley, and then uh, in 2015 felt a call to serve and help uh, Congressman Darren LaHood as his communications director stayed there for four years, and then now, of course, with the Peoria CBB. So um, very active in the community. Um, he's been on the board of the Young Professionals of Greater Peoria, the events committee at the Riverfront Museum. Um, he was part of the delegation that earned Peoria's fourth All-America City Award in 2013, uh, which is actually the same year that he was nominated or um, chosen as a 40 leader under 40, a member of that class. And then he um, has served on the board for the city of Peoria's the Civic Center Authority. So um, with that, I will just turn it over to JD for a fabulous presentation on um, the state of our community and their future goals. Thank you. It's good to be with you. I'm sorry I'm a little short of breath. Uh -huh. <laughs> Uh, it's been a it's been a fun day uh, today to be uh, where I am. I started the day with um, uh, the Bradley University Ali Group, a two-hour tour of the Warehouse District, talk thing, talked all things tourism and um, destination management and marketing, uh, and then I left. I had to jump on with uh, John Williams, WGN Radio. I saw Don Schaefer walk out. He heard, said he heard me on the on the radio, which was a great opportunity to promote everything we have here in Peoria and the area. Uh, up in the Chicago land. So uh, that has been a fun day. And now I get to talk to Rotarians, which is really one of my favorite things to do in the sense that when we talk about quality of life and progressing our our city and our municipalities forward and doing good work, you guys don't just talk the talk, you guys walk the walk. And for that, I want to open up by just applauding your guys' work for the community that we serve. And you guys are doing a lot of the heavy lifting. So thank you so much for what you guys do. Today, I get to talk about something really fun in the sense that from the get-go, the one thing I want to take away, you guys should take away, that I hold dear is that this is a truly collaborative effort among regional organizations and regional chambers of commerce for the betterment of growing and highlighting our population and our quality of life here in Central Illinois. I get to speak here in front of you today as from the Convention Visitor Bureau standpoint from Discover Peoria, but it also comes alongside our Peoria Area Chamber of Commerce, our CEO Council, and our EDC, our uh, regional EDC. So Joshua Gunn, uh, the CEO council, Chris Setti, myself and our board have all decided that now is the time that we bring our, our, our efforts together with our powers combined for the common good of understanding that we have had a population loss, there's no hiding it with the 2020 census data, and um, that we need to be looking 10 years ahead already. And we are going to put our skin in the game that all three of our regional organizations have come forth to put forth uh, capital and efforts in our, our, in our own expertise to combat some of that. And how do we do that? Well, we want to promote uh, what we have, we want to retain talent, we want to incentivize talent. And what you're gonna see here in this documentation kind of walks through the announcement we made last week in a little bit more detail. If you weren't able to be there uh, and see the presentation or see stuff from the news, I wanna go through that presentation here today. And so that's where this starts. This is GP Greater Peoria 2030 initiative uh, to really highlight um, what we have here and bring more talent uh, and workforce and just quality of life uh, to the forefront. I'll begin by saying with, I was in Des Moines, Iowa earlier this week at the Upper Midwest Convention Business Bureau's conference. And so many of the Upper Midwest CBBs come to, came to Des Moines to talk about what we're doing and, was, um, and, um, and the trends of the industry. I was pleased to sit next to my colleague from Rockford, uh, my counterpart, and he had heard the news of the GP2030 initiative last week, and he texted people in his community and says, how did Peoria beat us to this? It's a friendly competitiveness. Uh, and so it's a friendly competitiveness, that, but it's, it's knowing that we're doing something right now uh, that other communities across Illinois are trying to do, 
and they can't get it up and going quick, quite as, as fast as we have so far. So I applaud our, our foresight in this initiative. Additionally, we were talking to one of our industry leaders uh, from Destinations International, and he brought up the Mora Gas uh, destination cycle, which I don't expect any of you to know, but it's the concept that uh, when you build a great place for people to visit, us here, what we do, it translates into a great place somebody wants to live. So it's a great place where they want to live. It's a great place where they want to work. It's a great place where people want to work or just more business, uh, and the cycle continues. Now, one of our top industry experts across the globe said, I want to interrupt that and I want to mend that, that idea, that it starts with the visit. And it really starts with a brand. Now, a brand is a feeling and a perception of a region, uh, in our case, of what it means to be uh, uh, desirable. Right. I use a Coca-Cola example, um, uh, for instance. The Coca-Cola brand identity is that red, uh, Coca-Cola red with that white script font. It's undeniable, we know it's Coca-Cola. It's a brand identity. The brand is knowing that I'm going to drive my car through McDonald's drive through get an extra large fry because I'm getting that draft uh, fountain Coke to go alongside it because I know what it's like to drink that Coca-Cola with those salty McDonald's fries. It's also to the brand of McDonald's at the same time. So that's the brand, it's a feeling, the experience. You have one at Disney World, you have one even for our hometown of Peoria. And that's where we're starting here. But GP 2030, it's to really highlight that brand so that we can exercise a lot of things that come with it. So I might flip through these a little quickly here for the sake of time. But uh, as I said, as recent uh, census said, we have lost population along with its significant talent. The campaign is the first step in re uh, reversing this trend. So we've been proud to go through this process. Our staffs at the EDC, the Chamber of Commerce, CEO Council, and the CVB have worked together, and we have been able to hire McDaniels Marketing out of Pekin to exercise this campaign. So a local uh, marketing firm to execute this campaign in its first year. So what is the Greater Period 2030? Um, we want to amplify the facts and stories that we know to be true, the lifestyle that we have to provide, the welcoming community that we have for everybody. It's a special place to live, work, and grow. So you see the welcome and retention efforts, the marketing efforts and incentive programs to go with it. So that's really what it comes down to from the high level. Now we see the partner organizations here, as I mentioned, some of them, and I want to highlight on this slide, our partner organizations you saw is Discover Peoria, the Peoria Chamber of Commerce, uh, the Greater Peoria EDC, and the CEO Council. But I want to highlight these other uh, organizations because as much as we are a regional entities representing the entire region of central Illinois and the greater Peoria area, really about eight counties uh, surrounding uh, our hometowns, we have the Pekin Area Chamber of Commerce, the Morton Chamber of Commerce, the Downtown Development Corporation, the East Peoria Chamber of Commerce thus far have stepped up and said, no, we're going to be with right there alongside you. And so it's really regional when these, these organizations in our hometown communities step up to join the efforts as well. And I really applaud those guys, uh, Rick Swan, Liam Brown, uh, Amy McCoy and Michael Freilinger and his work so far and stepping up and saying, no, we want to be part of this. And we want to work alongside you. And so that's where it really becomes a regional effort as well. So the greater Peoria area is defined by our markets. Um, Stark, Marshall, Peoria, Woodford, Fulton, Tazewell, Mason, and Logan. Um, we uh, The CVB covers much of Fulton, Mason, Tazewell, all these seven. Uh, and then the EDC uh, claims Logan as well. So we have all both our organizations uh, markets uh, represented here. So the overall campaign goals, as you can see up here, is increase the population and talent of our region, attract businesses as well to the area, and highlight the greater pure area amenities that make it a great place to live, work, and play. Communicate the positive quality of life attributes of the greater pure area and improve the greater pure area's reputation in local and national cities. Um, I'm a firm believer that much of what we do, we have to shout a lot of good news. We promote the like great stories, the inspirational stories that come with it. We believe that positive conversation leads to positive action. And that's really one of our metrics here is that sentiment that comes from our campaigns to continue that positive communication throughout all of our, our marketing materials here. Uh, and then recently just improved the greater period of reputation in local and national circles. I think the realtor.com announcement this week, that's the second most affordable uh, region uh, to own a home uh, that represents the quality of life so that when people who are making just as much here than they do in Chicago, that, that dollar that's being spent here goes much further and that it's not being spent so much on, on your housing and, and rent uh, and income, uh, uh, rental expenses, uh, housing expenses. Our short-term goals. 
attract new residents based on the cost of, cost of living, quality of life, and opportunities available in our, our area. Uh, so it includes ongoing train, training with our realtors or HR professionals in areas uh, thought leaders to shed light on the positive attributes. So the online, the ongoing training, we're partnering closer with our realtor associations and our, our associations in a sense that when they are working with new residents um, uh, moving, whether that's moving within the region or moving to the region, obtaining data that can help us understand where they're coming from. So that's as simple as obtaining a zip code. What zip code are you coming from? And where are you going to? And that data alone can help us understand where the population flux is. I may have just moved 61528 in Edwards, but I moved to 61615 last year, but it's just a small move for my family. But then we have numerous people moving from Tennessee. Uh, the person who bought our old home moved from Tennessee. And so that data needs to be understood, even from rentals. Uh, the housing market right now is booming. Therefore, houses may not be available, but they might be landing with, to, to rent property. If that's the case, we still need to know that data. So working with the professionals that are there face-to-face -face with them, just getting that data is where that ongoing training is going. Um, our HR professionals, I'm beginning discussions, others are beginning discussions on how do we welcome this talent uh, to town, particularly with the hospital, uh, medical communities, trying to tap into the HR departments there to make sure we start a discussion Hey, when you're trying to recruit talent here, alongside your teams, we'd love to be a resource because sometimes you're not necessarily recruiting the physician, it's the spouse of the physician and the family that comes with it. And recognizing that, they need to know what communities uh, that, that, that have to offer. Now, the HR departments have their ways of doing the recruitment uh, systems, but we wanna be that helping hand. Now, the EDC wants to do the same, and, uh, and so how do we champion those efforts to, for that retention, talent reten retention? For key performance indicators to be measured in five to 10 year increments. So where are the KPIs we're looking for? What's the data we want to get back? See from this list, you see at the top of the list, population growth uh, per city, uh, the quality of workforce, rise in property values, um, hotel motel tax revenue, love to see more of that from where we come from. Uh, new business startups, new housing startups, uh, home ownership, you can see the number of jobs, jobs regional GDP, uh, resident sentiment, that's a that positive communication, um, and, uh, and uh, you can see net promoter score. Uh, now, the ones that are asterisked come from the alignment and the big table uh, objectives. So those familiar with the big table initiatives that we've had the last few years, those, that concept of bringing everybody to that big table, you know, everybody individually can take away initiatives that they want to champion. Uh, but here in this regional effort, we're taking away things that have been said at big table so we can implement this on a larger scale. So as I mentioned, we were able to hire McDaniels Marketing uh, out of Pekin to help champion this. Randy McDaniels was speaking to the CEO council this morning on uh, this progress as well. Uh, so it's great to be working with him. He was uh, one of the top sponsors at, in Des Moines uh, for our industry. So he's worked closely with the tourism industry, which really promotes the visit, which is that first date to moving and building a business and, and moving here. So. He knows a bit of the industry and uh, is kind of capitalizing off of that with this campaign. So our approach is to tell the following uh, greater Peoria area stories, successful business startups and expansions, singles, couples of families who have moved to the area and made an impact. So we know many families uh, that have chose to retire here or start their family here or move their family here. There's a reason they've chosen to do that. Whether they're moving here for the first time or moving back. We're obtaining those stories and for the willingness uh, of them to go on camera or go on record to share, yeah, this is why we did it. And it'd be smart for other people to do the same because we've seen these benefits from moving back to our hometown or moving to this region for my work. Yes, my job is based out of Chicago, but I can do it here and I have more freedom to do what I want to do in that lifestyle here in Central Illinois. So those stories are gonna be shared at a much higher level. And so here's some of the faces in which we, we will look to, these aren't specific faces, but these are different types of stories, numerous stories to share uh, throughout uh, our diverse array of talent. One of them is um, Alexander Martin, an outreach coordinator, moved to Peoria from West Virginia, an artist and performer. We even have Kayla Phillips, who many of you may know as well as graphic designer and business owner, moved to Peoria from Kansas City. That runs our business out of the Nest, co uh, Nest co-working uh, space. We have uh, worked with her on even the t-shirt design for this initiative and other art projects we've done in the area as well. So some of the advertising campaign, what does the material look like? Uh, as we launch, this is what we have. We even have some billboards running currently up in the Chicago area. Uh, is one of the avenues in which we're advertising these stories. So you can see one of them here, true urban, 
boundless country. Uh, and part of me was wondering, uh, billboards, is that, uh, is that our best approach? You know, you ask these questions around the table. And uh, it wasn't until last week when I was driving back to Chicago and I was stuck in traffic at 1030 at night that I realized, okay, yeah, less traffic uh, in central Illinois goes a long way. I didn't think I'd be stuck in traffic at 1030 in the night, at night trying to get home, but you can do that in Chicago. So we have that. That's why we're promoting less traffic and more living. You know, it just even 10 minutes a day extra in your car translates into hours taken away from what you could be doing elsewhere, whether that's with your family or just enjoying life outside of your vehicle. This is a little tough to read up here, uh, but what this is is a landing page in which you can find uh, this, uh, some of the metrics and some of the signups or some of the information. For those looking to move, you can go to peoria.org slash this is greater Peoria. Uh, and you can see those that are interested be connected with some of our local organizations or these stories uh, where some of our statistics here, where if this was blown up, you could read uh, the high quality of living less. These are statistics that highlight um, a median square footage for properties, median uh, listing price and price per square foot. So comparing that with, I believe the Chicago area compared to our area. Uh, so it's really for this first year, targeting just the Chicago land area for the demographics of which I believe are uh, upcoming slide, um, men and women between 21 and 45 years old, uh, emphasizing the mid-income uh, for that target audience. So the Chicagoland area, uh, area emphasized mid-income areas through the use of census data that we've obtained. Uh, the EDC has done a great job in obtaining that and, and, and moving forward. Uh, and the demographics, men and women, 21 to 45. Uh, those that have started families are looking to start families to add that population and that workforce uh, is where we're starting for that recruitment. So we're going to target those who are looking for a safe, lower cost community to visit and explore and possibly move to with sizable amenities that we have here. And the advertising time frame that we have is two three month media flights uh, with the first launching today, uh, which was a couple weeks ago, actually, and the second launching in March 2022. So talking a little bit about the tactics. Uh, the SEO and search engine marketing, this is where it's, it expands further than billboards. Uh, so uh, search engine optimization uh, is ensuring that the metro area is constantly on the radar for visitors, business owners. And so with our website uh, from Discover Peoria, investing in that asset, we've had incredible success in the organic traffic and uh, paid traffic uh, when we were able to advertise to our website. And so we've been able to move up in those Google searches, which is why we're hosting out of our website for this initiative and capitalizing off that success with further strategies in SEO, search engine optimization, uh, and marketing. Uh, digital and social display advertising. So these stories that we have in other platforms will be promoted on our social avenues, whether that's um, Facebook and Instagram feed advertising, using those hashtags, this is Greater Peoria, Hello Peoria, and Greater Peoria. Uh, so these will be pushed in front of those demographics uh, to explore those stories. Out of home advertising, including digital and vinyl displays in targeted areas, as I mentioned before, congested roadways, no matter what time of day in Chicago. Uh, and then uh, other campaign tactics include our media and public relations. Uh, so telling the greater Peoria story on a national, regional, and local level, uh, our event activations, including grand openings, new developments, and other activities and initiations we're gonna be doing. Uh, I will tell you that the press release we sent out about announcing this, we got a report back on where that press release was picked up. Uh, Newswire, Yahoo Finance, uh, we had a two pages list of sources that picked up that story and the impressions that come with those that, that news. So we'll be able to track where the news and this, these uh, media and public relations efforts are also going. Uh, and so right out of the gate, we've had some pretty good success. I know Pennsylvania, um, I think uh, Southeast Pennsylvania, close to the metropolitan area there, picked it up uh, for, for what we were doing here in central Illinois. I look forward to seeing where else in the nation this is getting picked up outside of our own region. So influencer education and awareness recruitment handbook. Um, we're trying to do this as well in, in uh, education with local realtors, HR professionals, and other influencers on the value proposition of living in the various communities. Um, the influencer education, we have plenty of influencers here in our own backyard, but then even emphasizing those to our influencers outside of this region to talk positively about our region can go so much further as well. 
it comes back to the notion from our industry when somebody comes to visit Peoria and the Peoria area, if they go back and speak positively about their experience and their visit, it translates into at times even thousands more visits. So a positive word from a positive experience translates into more people coming to visit. Breaking it down, you have a great barbecue in your backyard, you invite people to come over, they have a great time, they're gonna go back and talk about how great that barbecue was and more people are gonna to wanna to come to your barbecue. And it's much like that on a much larger scale. Businesses, conventions, and in this case, living and working in here. And so that's what this is. Uh, that's that influencer education. Our beginning uh, value is here at $75,000 through June 2022. Now this is an equal partnership between our three regional entities I mentioned. A CVB, the CEO council, uh, and the EDC coming in equally, put skin in the game, and then our regional chambers have come in as well. So this is to grow, and the work we wanna do is to promote more of the regional partners to emphasize uh, their support and what we're doing. So this is a relatively low number, uh, but we have to start somewhere. I think we're getting a great value for what we're putting forth with McDaniels and the teams that we have surrounded ourselves with to move this forward. So I anticipate this that number to rise for the greater success of these campaigns to move even outside of that Chicagoland area to more of a regional Midwestern uh, push as well. And so the measurements um, that you'll find that's more of the data driven is your, you know, um, for digital, you get the site visitors, time spent per page, uh, click through to partner sites, uh, earn media audience, social media engagement. These are all things we'll monitor along the way to determine uh, what's working well, what's not working well and where we need to tweak. And so that's the professionals uh, working behind the scenes for that, the, those campaign tweaks. As I mentioned, Kayla Phillips was helping with our design. Uh, these are the t-shirts that we've been able to uh, produce right out of the gate um, uh, to um, incentivize even newcomer research and even add to some of the welcoming gifts uh, for those special occasions in which we can, we can welcome families or, or talent to town. Um, we're looking to partner with our local businesses uh, and attractions so that when they, so what does that welcome wagon kind of look like? It comes with a t-shirt, but more than that, you get this itinerary pass to uh, the Chiefs games. Uh, you get a wildlife prairie park, some of our restaurants. Uh, and so when you come here, here are the amenities that are outside of our workplaces and, and come to, yeah, there you are, wildlife prairie park. Uh, so here's what you can do when you're not working, when you're choosing. Uh, so um, for the most of us, that's more data uh, to support what we're doing, but, um, with that, and for time's sake, I'm opening up for questions or any comments as well. <laughs> Sorry to rush through that, if that was a... Hi. Hi. Um, I like that you're having uh, Alexander Martin on there because the arts is such an important part of our community and there's so much more to it than what even the people that live here know that's going on. I like the campaign. I like the look of it. The, the sheet that says less traffic, more living, to me immediately says there's no cars on the bridge and you're going to stand in the woods. And that's cool for a lot of people. A lot of people love that stuff. But what I try to get across to people about Peoria is there is something to do here every single day. Mm -hmm. If you look for it, you're going to find something to do. And it makes me crazy when people say, oh, I got to get out of this town. There's just nothing to do. That's not true. They're not looking hard enough. And I think that that's something that needs to be promoted, especially to people that are coming from bigger cities. Uh, they need to know that there's a lot to do here. So I don't have a question. Oh, have no, a well, I, I, amen, sister. I tell you, yo, that's why I push everybody to my website, because this is one of our assets is to build the awareness, not just for visitors, but for residents to know what we can do um, uh, at all times of the day. I fell victim of that, not knowing what I can take my two boys on the weekend, but my calendar events now can show me the family friendly amenities. I think you'll see other, other graphics, uh, other advertisements pop up that highlight Exactly what you said. Not just standing in the woods, but other things to do. Thanks. And I noticed you mentioned the the hospitals. How is Caterpillar participating in this, given some of their trends of where, where they're moving their locations? How how is Big Yellow supporting this? Yeah, we don't ignore the fact that they're still top employer and this is their hometown. Um, where they move somewhere else, this is you know, it's a hometown, and that's where most of their employees are. 
Uh, we tr continue the communication that we can with Caterpillar and any avenue that we can. They're operating a little bit differently in their healthcare systems. Our healthcare systems are growing here and Caterpillar is moving in, in different directions in a whole different industry. So we, we, we value their partnership and their dedication to the central Illinois. And so uh, it's still the same route. There's still people looking to move here for that, for Caterpillar. Um, and so just like we treat our hospital systems, we treat Caterpillar as one of those large employers. Yeah, I don't think there's a person sitting in here that doesn't love this community. Um, it is, the Midwest is just one of the greatest places in the world to live. How are you guys uh, battling the uh, stigma that uh, the state has created? Ha, ah, we <laughs> That's a great question. Wow, we can talk. <laughs> Coming up on time here. Um, no, I appreciate it. Those are the tough questions and the scenarios we've had, right? And I said this at the press conference too. I said, we're doing what we can, um, knowing that we have something we, we can take part of and, and curb a uh, problem that we have. Knowing that still in the end, much of our what's affecting population loss is out of our hands at times, particularly at that state level. And there's systemic problems that are causing that. And whichever way you want to debate that, we're not here to debate that. We just know okay, we lost roughly 11,000 people, let's curb that. Maybe it's, do we see a loss of 7,000 people as a success, success? I don't know, it's up for debate, but if I don't want 11,000 again when we look back at 2030. And if there's any ways that we can combat those, those stigmas from the state level, uh, you know, we, can't, we can bark all we want, but it's, it's you guys know, libertarians. You grip what you can here in your hometown, you try and fix that, and that's what we're here to do. And that's why it takes persistence and optimism to, to really keep this moving forward. Because if you step back, you realize there's a lot you could complain about, but complaining only gets you so far. It's the optimism you have here in this room and the grunt work that, that takes place to really curb it. So we're really curbing that. We'll see what the success looks like down the road. Hope that helps. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, so pre-COVID, I used to look on your website for a calendar. And as Kim said, so many things there are to do in this area. But pre-COVID, when I would look for things to do, sometimes I had to go to at least two, three different calendars of events to see everything there is to do. Maybe I wanted to see live music, you know, or, or different things in the community. Is there a way to encompass more of those items on on your website? On the calendar, so you, if you want to see live music or festivals or whatnot, too, I think there's a way to do that. But I haven't, again, I haven't looked at that after COVID. No, that's fine, and no, that's that's one of the things we wanted to address. Our marketing team really wanted to combat that in, in a positive way, and a lot of it falls on us internally to make sure that we're getting that information. And people don't need people. A lot of people need to know they can just send that information to us to put on that calendar events. So we're it's a lot of education and outreach from our staff now that we've been able to rebuild. Uh, we have more resources to reach out to those. One of the things specifically we're trying to do from Discover Peoria is work closer with our municipalities in incorporating a relief to our small businesses that are in our, our membership base, typically. Your restaurants, your attractions, your uh, assets, your uh, hotels. And say, hey, let's, let's work together to provide relief uh, and get them membership. Now, when they have that membership, they get a set of amenities or uh, perks that come with it. One is that access to that calendar of events that, one, they can upload their calendar of events themselves or... Now they know who to reach out to to say, hey, I don't have the time, but this is our event we're putting on in October. Can you help put that on the calendar of events? We have two or three people ready to do that. So one, we've been able to rebuild. Two, the extended outreach and education for our members. An increase in members uh, based off our recovery efforts. Uh, hopefully we'll see that. And just a couple months ago, we were able to tout, at least internally, we had more than 100 events on our calendar of events. And that was a benchmark to really get back up to that uh, as we come out of the pandemic. So I anticipate we'll have more success and more value in that calendar of events for that scenario. You'll know exactly where you can go and filter by what you want to see and what you want to experience. Yes, sir. Kind of <clears throat> riding off of what uh, Kim was saying and a little bit of what Jim was saying, the arts partners of Central Illinois, are, are they a part of your organization now? Uh, we work very closely. They, they're not under our organization uh, from an umbrella standpoint, but Jen Gordon, uh, Mary Jo, the president of the board there, yeah. Kenny Delaney, they're in our office. So one of the great things that have come from that is, and one of the great things from COVID, if you can say that, is that we welcome them in. We had available offices to serve. We want to cut their rent, bring them in the house, and just having them there 
we were able to pop office to office and build the collaboration and creativity between, between organizations. So that's what we currently have. And that's why we've been able to fundraise for their organization and other nonprofits through a time alongside our hospitality industry. So they're right there with us, but technically don't fall under our umbrella. Because that website has so much going on with that. There's more happening there than anybody can do any weekend. Yeah. Art, arts Partners, artpartners.net. Artspartners.net. They send out an email every week. I get them at 4.30. Kenny's up at 4.30 in the morning. Send those out. <laughs> Not their schedule. He's up at 4.30 a.m. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks so much for being here. Um, I'm a developer. Develop departments downtown for the med students, several projects. And one of the things that I didn't see, and I know it's very fast that I'm back here and I may not see it, but the quality of our housing, both rental and purchase a home is amazing. Mm -hmm. And uh, last night we were trying to buy two homes in Morton uh, for our kids, both sold within an hour of looking at them. Yeah. But we were in some great kitchens and we have some great apartments uh, that show the brick and views of the river. And uh, I wonder, I know that would appeal to me if I was looking to come to Peoria, if that, uh, if, you know, if you could show more of that. Absolutely. I appreciate that feedback. I'll take that back because uh, many of my friends are developers um, 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 in, the, in that real estate. And my brother is a teacher in Morton as well. Uh, he couldn't look for a house until the school year was over because you have to start in the morning and you have to be ready to make an offer by noon. So that's a tribute to the communities we have and the quality of life in those, those homes. Any other questions? Thank you, guys. Appreciate it.